Okay, this is the August 6th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television uh, for viewing by our residents and the public later on. Okay, first item on our agenda, the minutes for the July 23rd meeting. Uh, has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah, they look great. Okay. Yeah, they look great. Excellent job again. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I, I found the, the minutes to be fine. Any Anybody have any corrections or additions? No. Yeah? Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the July 23rd meeting. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $105,154, a payroll warrant for $101,087, and a payroll deduction warrant of $24,313. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item is meeting attendance by, attended by board members. Phil, do you have anything in the last couple of weeks? Um, there's a joint, there was a joint school committee meeting uh, regarding the hiring of a consultant uh, for, for, to provide business director services, mm. um, which was approved at the rate of $8,000 a month. Um, and there's difficulties with that potentially because those jobs don't really get filled except in the spring when you're trying to fill them with someone that's got that's right. um, but the you have to put those kinds of contracts out to public bid um, when it's up to 50,000 so mm -hmm. so you can sign a series of one month contracts at $8,000 mm -hmm. but when you get to 50 you have to put them out to bid and there's a potential that you would have that you would have to hire somebody another consultant to Get to get you to bridge to when you can fill the so those things are messy and um, but hopefully that won't be necessary and we'll, we'll see but it still saves the district money over having an actual uh, full time employee doing that but you only get someone in the building two or three days a week instead of five days a week so right right yeah and you're a consultant like any. A consultant for anything is only as good as the person there that's doing it. This is true. Yeah. Will the person be local, you think? Or? The person is not local, but we do have the contractual right to demand a new person and so, so on and so forth. Or not we, but the, the district, the superintendent can, um, if he's not satisfied with the services of the person in the building, he can immediately get a person replaced. But. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that is that is a tough situation at this point in the year. Very tough. Okay, anything else, Phil? I think that's it. Okay. Nothing for me. Okay. Um, no meetings down on the Cape? No? <laughs> yes, but... <laughs> oh, okay. Not, not to do with us. Okay. Um, I had a uh, Franklin County Selectmen's Association Executive Board meeting last week. And we talked about plans for our next um, quarterly meeting, uh, which is going to be in October. Okay, and that's all I had. Uh, public comments. I don't see any public here, so I guess we don't have public comments. Old business. Um, okay. We're scheduled for a 610 public hearing, and since it's not 610 yet, I can, uh, uh, we'll I go can, to the update on Matthews Road Corrective Action Plan. I, I was counting on the on the meetings to go at least another five minutes. But, <laughs> but, uh, okay. I got it's snuffing. summertime. Yeah, I guess so. Um, you have in your packets a uh, a letter with some uh, highlighting on it, or you should. Um, and the letter with the highlighting on it is a response which we just got. Um, uh, the, the July 23rd date on this is the date of the letter that we sent to Lane. Right. The highlighted parts, um, are, on the email they're red. They didn't, uh, you know, come out distinguished, so I thought I'd uh, highlight them. Right. Um, and this represents to Ron a satisfactory outcome of the dispute that we have with Lane. 
Uh, they also uh, showed how they um, they calculated the uh, the amount of money they they uh, are going to credit us for the job, which is a little over eight thousand dollars. Right. Okay. Uh, which again is acceptable to Ron. Um, the the one thing that they didn't mention that we're still uh, working with them on is that um, we had asked to be relieved of the contract and um, the advice from Andrea Woods is um, uh, we already have a secondary contract and we asked them you know if that was okay and they didn't respond so if we write them or communicate to them that um, their lack of response we're taking is an acknowledgement that we're uh, dropping um, out of the regional contract. Um, uh, we're going to try that and just, just go ahead with that. The, the, there's got to be specific parameters for them to drop out of that contract. Um, well, it's mutual agreement, and uh, we have asked them, and they didn't say no. So we're going to say, we're taking that, you know, we're going to make a positive statement. And if they don't respond to that again, we'll be on solid ground. At least Andrea thinks we'll be on solid ground for that. Well, is That'll it, be. Do they have to respond? It's mutual consent. So silence is consent. Silence, silence implies agreement. Is that what we're saying? Um, but... You know, I think we're going to take an extra step and say, since you haven't replied, we're going to take this as consent. So, yeah, you I, know, I would do that. That, that way. Yeah. Okay. But everything yeah. else has been resolved. Yeah. Except yeah. positively, except that yeah. one situation. Okay. And has the work been done yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, mm, they haven't cut the part they were supposed to cut. Um, they have done... Um, Oh, I guess we did. We replaced the culverts that were broken, and they're just um, crediting us for that as well. Okay. Um, so the majority, actually, so the majority of the work, no. Um, they they have to cut away some of the pavement and leave us with a shoulder. Um, you can see one spot where it's already eroding off the side. And that'll just undercut the pavement eventually. We, we really need a shoulder everywhere. It's they they didn't leave us enough of one. In and it says they're gonna places. they're gonna mill the surface. <clears throat> yeah, there are some places where it's a little wavy, a little bumpy. That been done? You know. I'm sorry. Has that been done? Uh, I don't or? think so yet. I think everybody's waiting for this to be accepted. So yeah, no, I don't think any of the work has been done uh -huh. by uh, them so far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's good. We got we got that situation resolved. All right. Um, all right. Let's go to the wastewater committee application to Mass Work. Uh, just wanted to let you know what is being proposed. Um, that is, and the, it's the project description here. Just one right. page. Um, and. The result of all this would be a uh, a system where if 30 people signed up, it would cost them $600 a year. If 60 people signed up, it would cost, or if 50 people signed up, it would cost them more like $400 a year. So the more people who sign up, the cheaper it is for everybody. Right. Uh, what it would really allow would be. Um, to more commercial development downtown. If somebody wanted to mm -hmm. start a business downtown that required water and septic, they would be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right now, we don't have that capacity. You may remember a few years ago, the planning board brought a uh, kind of a wholesale redesign of the zoning bylaws to town meeting. And part of it was that the center of town would be more densely, uh, uh, more dense development would be allowed. 
you know, called village center zoning around these parts. And people said, wait, you're putting the cart before the horse until you have more septic ability downtown. We can't have more dense development, therefore we can't have really the only kind of economic development that the town is prepared to you know, be able to provide, uh, or at least provide the framework for. So the Wastewater Committee was formed. They've come up with this proposal. And th this would include um, using some section of the, the uh, Meadows property up here mm -hmm. um, for uh, the leach field. Uh, and again, this is just taking liquids off. People would still have their septic tanks. They would still need to pump them, but much less frequently. Um, and it would increase the capacity of, of downtown. So that's the purpose. This is as far as it's gotten. Uh, the grant application will be going in. They do need a certified copy of the minutes that you just approved for the last meeting. Uh, it's due this week. So... Right. Um, and I also sent along electronically the full grant application, so you can see what that looks like. Um, so I have, and this is this is part of that. So just to go just about what you said, I, I thought that the uh, the fees of four hundred dollars per year, six hundred that that fee range was if it was paid for by the town. This is proposing that the state pays for it. That, that's an ongoing operational. So cost. so those are the op, just the operational costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, the second one was in this grant application, um, and I was just paid, so 5.3B, 5, 5 there's a question, will this public infrastructure project be located on parcels of land that are part of a private development project site or adjacent to a private development project site? And the answer was yes. And I... Um, I would be really careful about answering that question yes, because number one, I think the answer is no, and number two, I think that if you answer yes to something like that, um, you could jeopardize your eligibility for this grant. Because you're talking about a public project benefiting a private developer. And so then what, what, but there is no private developer, what are you talking about? And when I, I go through this, and I see that there's, a section five benefited private development projects and is talking about a three hundred thousand dollar private investment with four rental housing units and three affordable but there is no project of that nature there's nothing been proposed or approved so uh which let's, page which page you want I am on ten, page 9 of 13 nine. and then 10 of 13. Is that the senior housing project? That's way far away. And that's not a private development project, that's a public development project. Yeah. No, it would be a private development project. Uh, the town was never going to be responsible for the development. That was always going to be turned over to a private developer. The town was going to supply the site. Right. Okay, so, so that's what he's talking about, but still there is no such project. He, he, uh, they're asking, is it part of a project? We have not permitted, approved, submitted, and I, whatever. There is no project. There's an idea. There's a glimmer of hope that in the future there will be a project. That does not count. Um, okay. Well, but, that, but, Joe, but Joe is a man, and to, yeah. to, this, is a, this is heroic effort. You know, and uh, um, sure, yeah, I, I t tip of the hat, tip of the hat to the gentleman. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're doing a great job on this stuff. Well, I'll, um, I'll find out his reasoning for that, and uh, um, and let you know. Do um, feel free to call people. Yeah, I just questions. saw this, I just saw this now. Um, oh, okay, and uh. I just thought, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, well, um, I think he was probably erring on the side of caution there. Or maybe he had actually taken this from something he drafted last year. That's, that's probably my bet. Um, so I will, I will ask him to review that. Okay. Let's go back to our public hearing. 
Okay, the public hearing is on the municipal aggregation plan that was submitted to us by Colonial Power. Um, and basically, uh, that plan uh, was subject to review by our residents and the public. And uh, when did we first put that on our website, Do you know, offhand? Oh, it was quite it was some time a while ago. ago. Yeah, it was at least ago. It was at least two weeks ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because the DPU wants to have at least a two-week period where the the public can um, comment. Have we received any written comments? I have not received any written comments. Okay. And if uh, you haven't, that means we haven't. And I don't see anybody here to give us any oral comments, um, which is not unusual in, in these in these plans. Um, I wish everyone had the Town of Conway website as their home page, www.townofconway.com. Mm -hmm. And the new website looks great, by the mm -hmm. way. Ah, yeah, it really looks good. We're it still te good. tweaking it. Yeah, still getting out some of the kinks, but well, it's you. always a work in progress. Yeah, always websites the, are always a work in progress. When you look at the website, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. When, you, when you look at the the website, you see the words municipal aggregation thing. Your eyes glaze over. You don't realize that this is what they're talking about changing your electric bill, and people don't click on it. Um, I, I, you know, I didn't. If I, I, I had to be here for two meetings before I knew that that's what it meant, and mm -hmm. that's the only reason I clicked on it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I, and I'm sure their eyes would glaze over when they actually read the plan. Maybe, uh, but you know what? What I, I think that the that the better way to have done something like this would have been to have, to have one one public meeting where, where the colonial guy is here um, before a vote. And that way, you're immunized from further arguments later on. We've had, we actually did a, a, an outrage. You know, and the, I, I tried to ask him, like, you know, are you going to be here to do the? And, and he's like, yes, but I guess he means once it's all signed up and uh, once he knows how much money they're going to make and lose and whatever. Um, right. He was talking about a meeting after the plan is approved by the DPU. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And just to clarify, when I put it up on the website, I was aware of the eye blazing uh, capacity. It, uh, the link is titled Your Electricity Buying in Aggregation. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit better. But Your Electricity tells people that something's going on, okay. I think. I think that when, when people find out about this, you're going to have two different, you're going to have people that are conflating the things that they're upset about. The one, you know, that, that they're upset that you're making a decision for them initially that they have to do something about um, that's um, it that's a common problem and, yeah. you know and the second thing that that the, nobody told them that this was going to be happening and, and you know so at least if you had something in advance you would have that one your base covered in that one area um, well we voted at the town meeting not this year but yeah a few years ago to yeah, grant the, the, the town was, was in favor of that. Yeah, it is a constant problem, and believe me, I face it a lot because mm -hmm. I keep, you know, putting things on, on the agenda and then I keep hearing about them later on, you know, oh, I didn't know about that. And it's tough because if people don't go to the website, if they don't click on the links, and, you know, I... It's, it's amazing the gap between how hard it is to get committees and boards to remember to actually post things outside, and then the gap between that and people who actually look at what's posted outside is, is huge. And we do need, a, I think, a broader civic culture um, is, is what it comes down to. I, I, I work for a competitor yeah. of, of Colonial Power. We do a tremendous amount of marketing and public outreach, and there are always people that say, I had no idea this was going on. It's like, well, you know. So and there, there will be a whole lot of public outreach once you know they start moving forward. Because, yeah. uh, and and you know, a resident isn't required to do anything unless they want to stay with the source, which by definition is going to be more expensive than the offer we're giving them, um, which they might want to do for any number of reasons, but. Um, 
uh, I think it's important also to note that if they don't do anything, their electricity bill is guaranteed to go down because that's part of our agreement with Colonial. So um, at least um, I think we can argue well, that no actually, harm is being done, right? We, I don't think we, ha that's not an agreement with Colonial, but we have the option as a board not oh, to not, oh, not, not, not yeah. to aggregate, you know. So yeah. when when it comes, to, Colonial will give us bids for electricity at certain prices, and we have we will then get to choose: do we wish to aggregate the town or not? And we can say no. Yeah, and I not think, not yeah. right now. And we'll wait for the next bids. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, so, so. But Colonial's compensation is the more people join it, the more Colonial's gets compensated. Yes, it is. So sure. yeah. why wouldn't they want to have as many public meetings as possible? They will definitely want to have public meetings to encourage people to understand why they should not drop out. John smiles knowingly. Like, <laughs> like. Yeah, they, there's, there's only a certain amount of public meetings that you're going to have that, that makes sense. After that, you know, it's law of diminishing returns, essentially. But, but anyway, okay. Are we finished our introductory here? Okay. Then I'll make a motion that we open the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, the public hearing is now open. We'll hear any comments. Um, oh, I thought we, I thought well, we, we already okay. we had did. it. And never, oh. never opened the public hearing. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, so. We were introducing. Well, I, I'd like to enter in the record everything that was just said about <laughs> the program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, right now we're, we're reviewing any comments, and we ah. have no comments. We have received no comments, either in writing or orally. No, we did. We did have board comments. But well, but no, no from the public. No public comments. Okay. You're not All right, public. so seeing that we've had <laughs> no public comments uh, on this matter, I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Yes. The public hearing is closed. Uh, we have done uh, what we were supposed to do for review of comments in this matter. Okay. Next item. Uh, I think you're supposed to vote to approve it. Uh, we want to approve the plan. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll make yes. a motion that we approve the aggregation plan as presented to us from uh, Colonial Power. We have had a chance to review that for at least a month now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a common plan. It fulfills the, uh, the requirements of the Department of Energy Resources and the Department of Public Utilities. So I'll make that motion that we approve that plan. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Yes. All right, next item on the agenda is the update um, update the special town meeting warrant. Tom, yes. what do we got? And there are updates, and there may well be another update, uh, but it's not on this one. Okay, when, when's our, what's our final to do this? Next, next meeting? Our final uh, to sign? I am hoping that it can be signed August 20th. If for okay. some reason we have to extend it, we can squeak by with doing it the day after Labor Day, but that doesn't give us a lot of time to print it and distribute it we'll, we'll have it for done. people to have, we'll have it two done weeks next, in advance next of the meeting, meeting, which is what we strive for. Yeah. Even okay. though the bylaws say we only have to give it to them three days in advance. Yeah. Um, so the first item is uh, the moderator, Nick Filler, is scheduled to be away until late fall. So town meeting will need to elect a moderator, which town meeting has done before and sure. do again. Do we have any? Well, okay. No. no um, it would be nice to have at least one known candidate before the meeting starts, preferably one with select board and town clerk approval. Okay. I have someone in mind that I, that I won't mention right now. All right. Okay. Um, I've uh, done it in the past twice. Oh, you have? Yeah. Oh, okay. Here, Conway? Yeah. Um, I have included in Article 1 the specific reason for the invoices for prior years. As they were both for the same reason, I don't see the necessity of breaking out the two invoices. Uh, that said, as of today, uh, we received some past due bills from the recorder for ads, uh, for which I'm not sure we ever received the original invoices. 
These would be invoices from prior years. I've given them a call and told them to send me the invoices so that I can look at them because we may have to include them. These are ads how, from the... How many invoices are we talking about? I don't know yet. Okay. Uh, but they came from the Conservation Commission, the ZBA, which has been some time, I think. Right. And from my office, which would have been for various, uh, for the uh, board assistant position. Okay. Uh, which might not have been bef before the first year, but I think it was. So you think we were never billed for any of those things to begin with? I don't remember getting one for the, for the board clerk. And I don't know whether the ZBA or CONCOM did, but all of these statements came on the same day. So my bet is that they, they missed a did, cycle. Somehow. They did an audit and uh, okay, yeah. found out they didn't send out bills. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that there are going to be some more bills from the recorder. Okay. They, they have all never right. missed my bill. <laughs> yeah. And how much can you say? Do you know how much they're for? Well, that's or? circulation. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have some options for Article 2. This is the um, allowing the uh, pilot for the Nexamp project. Right. Um, except, I'm, I, uh, we have some options, and I did get advice from the Division of Local Services, actually from DOR itself, Jim Crowley uh, in Boston. Um, the usual practice is for each project to be approved by town meeting separately, with town meeting giving the select board authorization to negotiate the agreement in advance of its acceptance. Uh, so two town meetings are usually needed for each project to move forward, one to authorize the select board to negotiate, mm -hmm. one to approve the project. I would like to propose the town meeting grant the authority for the select board to negotiate any and all pilot agreements in consultation with the board of assessors. Further, I am proposing the town meeting should grant the select board authority to approve any and all such negotiated agreements. Since these are two distinct steps, I believe there should be two separate articles. I was going to say, I think it should so, be two articles. Which, is, which yeah. is parts A and B in a single article, as it is here, with a motion to vote separately on the two parts, because they are, they are two distinct things, and town meeting might be very willing to grant the authority for the select board to negotiate any and all agreements, but not the authority to approve any and all agreements. So we're going to separate these into two articles? I could. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. I mean, we yeah. could do a motion to split the. Mm, let's, let's no, split the that's order. a good it's idea. It's cleaner. Let's do two articles. Okay. Because does town meeting usually give up its authority uh, when asked? That's what you're asking. Town meeting to give up the authority to approve. Well, uh, both, to approve both both payments. Well, well, well this, this is something entirely new. Right. You know, yeah. But as a matter of general speaking, does town meeting willingly give up their uh, an item that they have authority of? I don't know. It it hasn't really come up yeah. much that I that I know. But, oh. but the authority that you were mentioning there was on an individual basis, not any and all. No, I'm you, proposing any and all. No, no. But when you, what oh. you read as, as to what what was proposed. The usual practice is for each project to be approved by town meeting separately with one town meeting vote to grant the select board the authority to negotiate the pilot and another subsequent vote to approve the project that was negotiated. And the pilot pro and the agreed upon pilot amount. That's part of the agreement that right. was negotiated. Right. Yeah. So there are two parts. And some of this is because I know there's another one in the pipeline. And if, you know, they might have to wait till May to move forward. So how would Unless this, how we had another special town meeting. And I can't see calling a, I can't see calling no. a special town meeting for one so, business doing one no. pilot. You know? let, let me ask a question. The, the, it, mm. What's the goal of the town in approving these types of things? Is it to get the project or is it to drive the best bargain for the taxpayers? Yeah, it's number two. So, so, so then I, quest, I question the value of uh, 
of taking away the authority of town meeting to approve of the payment given to the town. Because if you if you are trying to drive the hardest bargain, I think it's better to be able to say to have to say this sounds okay to us, but it's got to pay you. You know, it's got to pass town meeting, and you might have to kick in more. You know, whatever you. It's one more way to get more for the town. Um, and that's just been my experience in things related to the school as well, that when, when you, with vendors, with contracts, everything else, when you're saying it, this has to go before the entire committee as a whole, it forces all the transaction to be as generous as possible um, mm -hmm. uh, for the person that's trying to get something out of you. Um, and so, so, so I, I think it, I, yeah, I, if, if the object is to drive the hardest bargain for the town, I think we should keep the town meeting as a backstop, um, that it, it makes the town select board have a better negotiating position. Um, that, that's possible. There are guidelines on the pilot, and it has to be based on um, the full and fair market value of the property that's being put up. So, yeah, so it, it's a fairly a, narrow, narrow range. range. It's not like we can hit somebody over the head with these with the negotiations here. It's got to be in a reasonable range of the, the market value of the property. The way I originally read it, it was like a single value. You have to negotiate this as the pilot. The, 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 the main question is allowing a pilot on the personal property that's being installed rather than simply charging an increase in the property taxes of the person whose land it's on. And it is almost, I think it's universally considered beneficial for the town to negotiate a pilot. That said, the pilot drops off as years go by because there was depreciation on the personal property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I believe it's, it's considered advantageous for the town to negotiate it anyway. And that's why I say in consultation with the Board of Assessors, because they're the ones who are going to be on top of the depreciation schedule and and is this really a good deal for the town as the pilot? Um, is the amount we're paying for the personal property more than what we would get for the accumulated property taxes over those years? But if we don't pass this, then we're required to have a special town meeting. Or an annual town or, meeting. Or an annual town meeting. Just, for everyone. Whenever the next town meeting is, that's, I mean, sir, that's sir, when To me, a, a makes perfect sense to me. And that, that I, I agree with 2A. Well, which, um, which is common. So, um, B, I'm still contemplating. Now, you see, mo most of the time, too, we're going to rely very heavily on the recommendation of the assessors in a situation like this. Because <coughs> they're the ones that do the valuation of that personal property. They're the ones that have the, the expertise in giving us the recommendation. If it, if it does end up going on, um, which can be decided next time, um, or second recommendation could always be two to one, and you can explain exactly your concerns. And I think a lot of people in, in town would agree. Um, that said, I'm not sure how much negotiating power the town has. It, it's pretty much, again, the, the, it's not so much how much you're getting, but that you're doing a pilot rather than assessing property taxes. What else do we have pilot payments on? I mean, I know that we have it for state owned land. Yeah, we don't really have a pilot with any of our nonprofits in town. Hmm. We don't really have any nonprofits in town that have mm -hmm. an ability to pay a pilot. Do we negotiate? With the state over what they give us, when they, <laughs> when that is a that is a cat with a really long tail. Yeah, uh, no, uh, they tell us in the cherry sheet how much they're going to give us, and and you know uh, the budget just passed had an increase in the pilot yes. for cities and towns. Yes, not a whole heck of a lot. Most of your cities and towns would say, well, if that were in fact uh, private developable land, it would go for a lot more than you're paying. Yes. Okay, next order. Uh, next one. Um, for Article 3, um, as of the date of this writing, uh, as of today, uh, the bill allowing the taxation of Airbnb and other similar rentals passed by the legislature was awaiting 
signing by the governor. I still don't know that it's been signed. He had uh, ten days. It, it take it took it took effect. If he didn't, uh, we're right. You're real close to that ten day yeah. limit when it takes effect without him doing anything. Or it's a pocket. I think it's Wednesday. Pop I think beating. Wednesday is the is the last day, isn't it? So anyway, um, it lays uh, this article, Article Three, lays the groundwork for a bylaw by accepting the appropriate Massachusetts local option statute, but is not a taxation bylaw <laughs> itself. So this is not. This right. doesn't tax anything. Right. This says the town is accepting the local option um, for a room occupancy excise and will come up with a bylaw which could cover B&Bs separately, it could cover, it could look like anything and it would be, you know, a chunk of work for the Board of Health and the Planning Board and everybody to get together on, but this does lay the groundwork for that non-tax source, I mean, non-property tax source of revenue. So that's Article 3. I have added Article 4, and Article 4, to allow the garage project to get started. After Good speaking idea. with Ken and Ron and gaining some optimism, we can move ahead soon when we get some people with construction experience on the committee, and I think Ken is uh, pretty close to that. Um, I hope the owner's project manager and design don't cost as much as the article authorizes mm -hmm. because I hope to be able to use the prior design or one closely based on it, but it did cost this much last time, so I'd like to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So I got some questions about this. When did the town vote to go ahead with the garage? That was a year ago, May. They have they voted to approve the garage? I thought it was approved payment into the garage stabilization fund. No, there was a there was a straw vote to say we're we're ready to move forward with the garage project. And to build the committee again. Well, the, the the straw vote was to the town was ready to to see another garage proposal. That's a lot different than a vote authorizing construction of a garage. I mean, I, to, uh, I, I, you know, there was three votes that I oh, know of that said we don't want a garage. Well, this isn't to build a garage. No. It's to spend two hundred thousand dollars to to get to, to that. If we weren't building a garage, we weren't we wouldn't be spending. Right. Well, we need to create the plans for it before we can decide whether we want to build it or not. Because you have to go out, you have to need the plans to go out to bid to find out what it'll cost. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and no. you don't need the specificity uh, that you will need for construction of the building. Yeah, yes, you do to get yeah. a bid. That's yeah. what town meeting's going to vote on yeah. when it votes. Uh, well, that meant that's what got voted down last time. So didn't we already spend like sixty thousand dollars to, to cost the whole thing out completely? One hundred and fifty thousand. One hundred and fifty thousand well, dollars to cost know, the whole thing out. Two hundred thousand, really. That's this figure is two hundred thousand dollars. Well, that was us last time to come up with a complete set of plans and how much it was going to cost. We were ready to go out to bid, and town meeting said no. We don't want to do it. But we're doing it anyway. No, no, we're, we're starting, starting all over. over. We this have is the article over. you're talking about. We have this to is an start over. Saying, should we spend two hundred thousand to get to the point where we can vote on a garage? Yeah. See, and <clears throat> those two things should take place at the same time. No, they can't. You have to. You have to have a design for people to vote on. We have to go through that process again. Town meeting nixed what we did last time. Not by much. We, we have to be to a point where we can go out to, to get a yeah. bid for competitive pricing. That's what the town votes on, is the pricing of the project. We can't get to that point before we do this. Yeah, this is going to take six months. Um, so... And, and I also thought to take out of a stabilization fund, don't you need a specific 
line item that you're going to be spending it on. This is just like give us two hundred thousand dollars and we'll hire a manager and then we'll use it for some other things to get started too. And it does it doesn't there has to be like absolute specificity about exactly what you're asking for? Well, we we're asking for to hire a project manager and revise existing plans. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we're asking for. So that we can get to the point where we can go out to bid. And that's when the vote of, of town meeting comes in to, to approve or not approve the but final the plan. Yeah. <clears throat> this is all prep. All right. I got questions about this. But, um, I'm going to try to talk to the uh, committee members about some of my questions. Okay. All right. Next one, Tom. Uh, let's see. Um, Article 5 is the um, proposed marijuana bylaw. And uh, they're going to have a hearing on it on the 17th, September 17th, one week before town meeting. And so there may be a, you know, based on the results of that hearing, there may be a, uh, a motion to replace the article in the warrant with an amended version, uh, or if nobody has any problems with what is being proposed, we can go with this. So that this just stands it as it is until the hearing, and uh, people can show up to the hearing. And uh, say what they want. It'd be good to include a uh, notice of the hearing when we mail the warrant. Okay. <clears throat> who, who has the planning board been working with on this article? Do you know? Uh, Peggy Sloan at the COD. Okay. Okay, so that's the whole... Uh, so that's my, the whole my, question, my questions about the marijuana bylaw are just is an interest in um, knowing where the planning board decided to go from like the state minimums and increase either the regulatory burden or some other aspect of the regulation that, so that it's more constrictive than the state minimum would allow. One of those just looking at it that I could see was the setback from uh, in distance from schools and whatever. I believe this, I, they're proposing 500 feet. I believe the state minimum setback is a lot less than that. But no, I thought the state minimum. It might be. I, yeah, I, yeah, I could state, do wrong. Yeah, could state do minimum is 500. So. Well, the odd thing is, um, unlike most other laws, this, the wording in the statute um, seems to say that it's a five, that you can't, uh, that a local bylaw can't have anything more than 500 feet. Now, in the usual construction of, the, of laws, the local government could provide something more restrictive than the state. And in this case, more restricted would be farther, right. like a thousand feet. Sure. But the statute is written to provide a 500 foot maximum distance from schools, and there is no minimum distance. So it's interesting, if this provides a 500 foot um, minimum, then it has, then the only things that can be, um, well, no, let me start over. Um, we can't say that it has to be a thousand feet away. Right. Um, so, I think, um, you know, saying 500 feet is kind of like a placeholder for if that ever gets resolved. It's odd because it seems to take away that principle that local governments can do something more restrictive. Um, which and I, they, they, I, I they usually would. Impressive. I think the, the, where that all comes from and the hesitant in letting local governments do all that is that uh, that comes from our drug, the, the drug laws that, that you get enhanced penalties for having certain drugs within, a, within so many feet of a school. Mm -hmm. And then they applied that also to public parks and libraries. 
and then they gave led it up to local communities to put the that yardage so that there are portions of say Boston whatever that happen to be right where most of the minorities live uh, that being caught with that specific drug anywhere in that community is an enhanced penalty because mm -hmm. the way those and, and so it's oh, okay. so it's they're, they're trying to tap that down and that's good public policy in, in my opinion but um, but uh, I want one of the I, I want a local host agreement that they agree to pay the town money so uh, uh, um, I, I hope we get somebody that is willing to execute a a, a host agreement with the town. Well, um, and uh, the, the money we would get would, would be something that we would have to demonstrate is what we're spending extra as a result of them being here. So it would be more police, probably. Oh, it's, it's the school guidance counselor. It's the school psychologist that we have to hire. It's, uh, you know, the extra school, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we would have to demonstrate that. That's not a problem. Okay. Okay. Tom, you're implying that the fire under feet is what's in the law now, and yet it's also in this document? Yes, you it know? is, and I think it's I, I think it's good to keep it in here because it's a placeholder in case um, somebody says, wait a minute, we want it to be a thousand feet, and um, it gets changed at some point because any law right. can be amended. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we'll talk about in the... September 17th. Uh, I, I, I don't think this particular issue is going to come up until somebody does challenge it and uh -huh. goes through the courts and all that sort of thing. But it is an oddity to this law that isn't that that kind of reverses that. We, we could have a rule that said it was 300 feet away from the school or 200 feet away from the school, no, but we can't have it 600 feet away. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, so we all have a. So this will be signed next meeting, hopefully. I hope so. Okay. Uh, I will also add that the finance committee uh, has decided to meet at six o'clock on Monday to make their recommendations on this. Okay. So I will be plugging in their recommendations and um, printing that out as for a final signed okay. copy. Good. Thank you, Tom. All right, next item on the agenda is the um, to appoint Roger Gaucher as part-time transfer attendant uh, for turn at the uh, transfer station uh, for a term ending 6-30-19. And we did receive a, a memo from the Board of Health recommending that we approve his appointment. Has everybody seen this? I think it's in the letter pile, though. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so based on the recommendation of the Board of Health, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve Roger Gaucher as part-time transfer station attendant for term ending 6-30-2019 to replace um, Leroy Rose, who recently... Um, Resigned from his position there. Do I have a second? second? I'll second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. okay. Okay, next item is to appoint Mark Silverman uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending 6 30, 2021. Uh, I serve with Mark on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals and he does a, a very, very good job. Uh, this should have been on, uh, uh, or or the term should have been. This is a term correction, really. Um, it, just a, uh, an oversight back in June when we were doing the the list of everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I thought that he, we did him already. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, it's a, a really amending the term. Ah, okay. All right. So I'll vote vote that we amend his term uh, as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals to end. Uh, June 30th, uh, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. And thank you. Okay, next item is to close out certain special revenue funds. Okay. We had... Uh, 
we, we have several. Um, whenever the town votes money for something, uh, it, it's actually kind of rare that it's spent down to zero to the penny. So um, the select board can um, vote once a project is over to close out those funds to the general fund. And that's, um, that's what this is all about. And there are three major ones. Uh, one is there was a study that was going to be done. It was done. It was dog chow. Um, it, enough to say that the study that was requested was not completed. Yes. <clears throat> um, and uh, there were uh, three different articles regarding the pipeline, and uh, you should have gotten letters from the Conservation Commission and Planning Board both agreeing that the uh, pipeline articles could be, uh, could be closed out. And finally, the 250th Anniversary Committee. Um, uh, the, I, I think the best, um, it, we, can, we can close out uh, the fund and uh, there's, there's somewhat more than $30,000 in it. Um, but because the form asks to, uh, ask for a citation for a specific article, uh, there is one article that was for thirty thousand dollars. So I'm, I cited that on the form. The actual mm -hmm. amount is uh, is is thirty four thousand. I think something. Thirty thousand one eighty six. Oh, thirty thousand one eighty six. Oh, that's good. They didn't use the money. They did not. Uh, either that, or they got thirty thousand dollars in revenue that they weren't anticipating. I know some of that. Well, I know. I know of about 50 that well that, that could be that could be that's pretty impressive they did it they did a very good job uh, yeah th that was my favorite weekend ever here that was an unbelievable great, weekend great job and uh great fireworks. Great, great everything about it was great um uh, but uh th is shouldn't we be rolling that over and for festival of the hills then the Festival of the Hills is Maybe. no longer a town sponsored yeah. for the 300th yeah. anniversary, perhaps. But it's a long time to hold on to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to see us support the Festival of the Hills continue. I don't. We are waiting for uh, a certificate of insurance to execute the contract to give them the money that they had raised earlier that we're we're ready to give them when they. Uh, when they give us that. Would paying for the police department for that day, would that constitute something, uh, uh, making that a town event then? Is it, like, w w what's the board? The, there, is, can there, we do anything to help them out without it being a town event? Um, perhaps I can make that a an agenda item. That's really not what we're, what we're voting on. Yeah, here. that's true. Um, if you want to discuss that, um, I can put it on as an agenda item. All right, let's go down the list here. We've got the Frontier Regional Study. That's um, the project was essentially not completed. So uh, $3,000 is the remaining balance. Uh, and we'll vote to, um, to close out that revenue fund. Should we vote on these separately? Yeah. Okay. Make a motion on that. Sure. Uh, so moved. Okay. Do yes, you have a second? Aye. Okay, all in favor? Yes. Okay. Yes, this this uh, financial uh, set of items is heavy on documentation. But there's there's lessons in here, though. You know, next time someone says, you don't know what you're doing, do a UMass study on this. <laughs> Point to this, this one that we're calling back this $3,000 for that we know our own town better than you UMass can. <coughs> okay, the next one is a pipeline article that was passed uh, at the May 11th, 2015 town meeting. It was Article 12. And uh, there is still a remaining balance of $9,750. Uh, the pipeline project didn't go ahead, so it was essentially canceled. 
So I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, closing of this special revenue fund. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. So they're going to be one for each of these now? Yes. Okay. Heavy on the documentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item is also a pipeline uh, article. It was passed at uh, town meeting May 9th, 2016. It was article 20. Uh, the remaining balance in that article uh, is $19,400. Again, since the pipeline project was canceled, uh, I'll make a motion that we close this special revenue fund. Um, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There's still pressure to bring these pipelines you know back. what but I will note for the record that if we'd have known at that time that we would not be spending this money town meeting that night would have been over in an hour instead <laughs> of the four hours that it took right okay um, okay next item is also a uh, pipeline article um, passed at town meeting May 9th 2016 it was article 21 um, again because the pipeline was canceled, uh, this article has 5,000 remaining in it, and um, I'll make a motion that we close out this special revenue fund. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? So this is the article that we amended that article. Yeah. To say uh, we didn't have to pay that yeah. if it got canceled. Was there a vote? Uh, yes. Whoever did that on the floor, that was a good, that yes. was, whoever did that, thank you. They, they, they all voted. Okay. Yes. I heard a yes from John. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, the last one is uh, the 250th Anniversary Committee. Um, we have various town meeting uh, votes, uh, including uh, May 9th, 2016, Article 9, uh, the article balance remaining, um, $30,000, although the exact amount is $30,186.24. Um, that project was completed last year and the, the committee and that weekend did, did a fantastic job, uh, very enjoyable weekend uh, for our 250th anniversary. I'll make a motion that we um, close this special revenue fund. Do I have a second? I'm can I make a motion to alter your motion in a more, just to express our gratitude to the 250th for making your motion possible? Yeah. Why don't we make that a separate motion? This okay. is a okay. motion, okay. and okay. you make a separate motion to okay. congratulate the committee after we vote on this. Okay. Do I have a, a second? second? All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay, Phil, make your motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to... Uh, on behalf of the town of uh, Conway, the select board to express its gratitude to the 250th committee for uh, for not spending town money, and for returning it to the town, and for still doing an incredible job. I'll second that. Do you want to second? Second. That? You want to? I call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Okay. Tom, do we have any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Oh, uh, that was one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah, it's related. It's, it's <laughs> that was one. We'll, 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 we'll just stick it down under there. There we go. That select board comment right there. No, that, that was an item not anticipated, and that, that is what it should go under. That's where it is. Thank you. Okay. No others, Tom. All right. Can we have your update, Tom? Uh, somewhere I have an update. Yeah, it must be on my desk. One second, please. While we're waiting for Tom, over the last two weeks, I got two very nice compliments about 
how much people like our uh, select board meetings. <laughs> Conway residents? Conway residents, yes. Wow. And what a good job they think we're doing. I, I, I was I've, thrilled. I've been shown someone's Facebook page where somebody's more or less live blogs, a town resident more or less live blogs on Facebook this meeting every week. And shares, I would love to see it. And shares her uh, concerns at that at the moment she's having them. Oh, okay. so you can tell maybe more narration of exactly what we're doing might be helpful to some of the viewers at home. Uh -huh. they, they, well, that could be true. Yeah. Sometimes our voices drop out, I'm told. Okay. But, but by and large, the comments were very positive. For committees and boards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No dropping out. Uh, there will be a Conway Pool Party sponsored by the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Committee and the Conway Pool Association on Saturday, August 25th from 1 to 4 p.m. with a rain date of Sunday, August 26th. Food and refreshments will be provided. Parking will be available to Pumpkin Hollow Common, as in the past. They're also putting, planning to put up an advertising sign on the 116 Elm Street Island near the library. I assume that's going to be fine. Uh, the first meeting of the Cable Advisory Committee is scheduled for tomorrow night, Tuesday, at 6 p.m. at Comcast's request. Uh, Who's on the Cable Advisory Committee now? Uh, Bill Arduzer, uh, Jonathan Barkin, and you, uh, uh, me, okay. uh, Ron, huh. and uh, Ron, Ron Hawks, Ron Hawks, Ron Hawks okay. and. And a fellow named Cruz that I don't know, but he Jose Jose, Jose Cruz. Cruz yeah. right. I don't okay. Know, but yeah. Why yeah. would Comcast request? Well, it's that time that. for our franchise renegotiation, or to get started on it. And uh, I I might not be able to. to make okay. I, I would strongly suggest that we we do something that coordinates us with the other three towns. That's my goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It could mean a a, a seven year agreement instead of a ten year agreement. Um. The Finance Committee, I already mentioned, is intending to meet the same time as the Select Board on August 20th and provide the recommendations for the town meeting articles at that time. I noted to the Chair that such timing was very close. As you probably know, the Agriculture Commission has received a complaint and is dealing with it as they're supposed to under the Right to Farm Bylaw. If the matter rises to a policy level, it may come to the Select Board, but I'm hoping it can be resolved more easily. In departmental news, with the switch to Comcast, we now have new Wi-Fi at the town office and town hall. Because of the details of setting up the account, um, at, at least the town office uh, Wi-Fi is named Guest Conway Police. Uh, the entire town office is designated as the police department for Comcast's purposes. Uh, I've emailed the password out to all committees. Um, I will check on what the uh, the Wi-Fi for Town Hall is, and um, uh, I'm I sorry. Ha I have that if you want to. Oh uh, yeah, what, what, what is that? It's Public Town Hall. Oh, Public Town Hall. Uh, so that is the uh, <clears throat> that is the uh, uh, Wi-Fi name uh, when you're over at the Town Hall. Uh, the Conway Grammar School water tank is scheduled to be cleaned and lined starting tomorrow and going through Thursday. The tank was drained over this past weekend and the tank float switch assembly removed, which will allow the tank to be cleaned and lined. The tank float switch assembly will be reinstalled Friday. The tank should then last another 15 to 20 years at a much lower cost than replacing it. Famous last words. What, what do they, what do they um, line it with? Some kind of plastic. It's a plastic liner? Yeah, it's, um, it's not metal, that's for sure. <laughs> but right, uh, right. but they're, gonna, they're gonna clean it out really, really well. Okay. Um, we can only hope that it's not rusting through. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, in other news, uh, Chief Wimet told me that he spoke with Palmer Paving, who's going to be paving Route 116, and they said they are planning to start work in one week on August 13th. Now, where are they going to be paving from? 
Do we know the, the, the length? I think they're just going down the whole of 116, and they're going to be in Conway on August 13th. Whole of 116, okay. Well, we're, because it's, I mean, we have it particularly bad, I think. Right. Um, They've already done most of Deerfield's 116. So they're, they're done with Deerfield, so maybe they're coming up instead of down. Yeah, from the line, from our, our town line, all the way through. Um, yeah. That is the impression that I got. Okay. All right. I, I mean, as long as they're here. Um, uh, and uh, finally, I'd like to give a short remembrance of Paul Dunphy, Representative Stephen Kulix, district manager who passed away last week. Everyone I know who worked with him found him very helpful and enjoyed working with him. I, I heard that at the end of last week. I was shocked. I, 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 thought, I thought he was getting better. But I guess not. Great guy, Paul. Great guy. Yeah. Uh, and, and boy, I knew he was sick. I didn't know he was that sick. But. Yeah. Well, I, I, I thought he, I thought he was getting better, but I guess, yeah. I guess not. That's too bad. I'm very sorry to hear that. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Um, select board comments. Do we have any select board comments at this time? No. Okay. Mail. Let's see what we got in the mail. Okay. We got a letter from the Massachusetts Office on Disability um, just indicating to us that uh, municipal ADA improvement grant program applications and selection process for um, fiscal year 19 has been announced. Uh, project grants are up to 250,000, will be awarded for successful applicants to remove barriers and create improved accessible features and programmatic access for persons with disabilities throughout the Commonwealth. Um, do we have any, uh, any plans to submit a, an application? Not for this year. If we okay. had, there would have been an article on the town meeting warrant because it's a 60-40 grant. We would have to pay 40% of the cost of anything. Um, the next major project that I know of that would be good to do is installing Elevator. an elevator mm -hmm. yes. in town hall. Oh. Uh, once we did that, we could start thinking about renovating the upstairs into offices. Right. right. Uh, however, um, and installing a lift um, distinct from an elevator, mm -hmm. not exactly sure how completely, um, but that would be much cheaper and uh, what we would need is to get the, um, is to get a design done first. Now, now isn't a lift for like a half floor rather than a full floor? No, it, it could be, it could, it could be a floor. Could go the, the whole thing. The Leverett Town Hall has an excellent example. Um, it's slow, but it makes it all legal and mm -hmm. it's um, perfectly functional. They don't have trouble with it. it okay. I'd, I'd like us to really weakness. look into that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, absolutely. The ele yeah. el uh, uh, being an elevator owner is something like being a dam owner <laughs> that you just don't want. Mm -hmm. um, the Northfield Town Hall had an elevator and um, it, it needed to be worked on about every nine months. Uh, typically our schedule was a year and typically it would start breaking down about nine months. And that was partly because it was a, it was, it functioned as a, as a four corner lift and all the corners had to be calibrated uh, because they didn't have enough money to dig down, which is what elevators usually have is, is machinery underneath the thing. Well, they didn't have the water table in Northfield. And um, until we got them on a nine month rotation, it was terrible. Mm. It's not just that, it's, it's in particular what you're supposed to watch out for is putting an, a new elevator into old buildings. Because that when they're not designed for it, then the guts of the elevator tend to get located in places that are unheated and unair conditioned. And that's very bad for those guts. And, the, and when your elevator goes, it's like 80 or 90 grand like that to mm -hmm. fix it. Sure. And what, what's it, the difference between a lift and an elevator? Is it easy to? 
thing. Um, a, a lift is a much smaller mechanical yeah. thing. The elevator yeah. requires um, superstructure yeah. above, and a lift uh, just comes up from the bottom. Hmm. Is how I understand. What does Sunderland have? I don't know. They have an external elevator. No, they have an elevator. It's built or they have a thing built onto the outside of the yeah. of their building. Yeah, which is the unheated thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, no, the guts of it though. Oh. oh, okay. At least the motors and everything are all in the basement. Okay. Well That's away it. from the elements. Yeah. And we, when we don't have a basement in uh, in our town mm -hmm. hall, we do have a crawl space, but mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. a basement. Mm -hmm. So there, mm -hmm. there's a lot to be done before then. And and we would have to um, field trip at the yeah. lever. You know, it's making me think. We would, we really would have to approve design money. Well, we could we could go slowly. Um, we don't really have. We're not. We may not have our free cash number by the time this town meeting takes place. Um, but we would have to have a design done to know how much it's going to cost before we ask for how much it's going to cost. Um, the, uh, you know, it's, my bet is that the design could be done for $15,000, mm -hmm. uh, maybe ten, because I think the project would be 100000 Two hundred and fifty thousand, sure. as opposed to a minimum of three hundred thousand for an elevator. Yeah, right. Um, but we would have to have the design done first. I don't think we have a source of funds for that, for um, to have something ready for the May town meeting. Um, if we had another special town meeting, we'd have free cash. We could vote that, um, and I would love to get that done. Uh, but we may have to take it in annual stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just the elevators wouldn't just be three hundred grand. It would also be a hundred grand into capital stabilization to be prepared for the emergency failure that will that will happen, that will happen at some point, and you can't let it cripple your town function. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Any announcements? No announcements. Okay. Um, Oh, also in the mail, we, we got our uh, our Beacon and our Municipal Advocate, which are both very, very good publications of the Massachusetts Municipal Association. Um, and there's a lot of good information on these, so let's make sure we, we read those. Um, all right, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, August the 20th, here in the town offices at 6 p.m. Okay, we're going to have an executive session tonight for um, reason number three, to discuss strategy re with respect to litigation. Um, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, and I certainly so declare that. Um, we'll take a vote to go into executive session and, and we'll, we will we'll, we will we'll, we will adjourn from executive session yes phil yes robert myself yes